Here are three must-eat West African-inspired restaurants in New York City. Let me tell you why. When it comes to West African dishes and restaurants, it's not only vast, but something I have honestly not done a good enough job digging into. So I'm off today with Chef Eric Ajapong. You've seen him all over Food TV on shows like Top Chef, Alex Source America, and Wild Card Kitchen, and your Knicks star forward, Precious Achua, uh, who at 6'8", deaf knows what's up with good food, as they bring me around New York City, showing me some of their favorite West African-inspired restaurants. Before we get to the food, though, I go on Food Adventures all over the world, so make sure you are subs so you don't miss one bite. Taranga in the Hugh Food Hall is a fast, casual eatery showcasing the incredible food of West Africa in different bowls with its diversity of dishes, ingredients, and flavors. Yo, what's going on? Chef Eric Ashbunk here. Precious Achua. We are at uh, 53rd Street between Lex and 3rd. We're going to check out Taranga right now, West African uh, restaurant that's been killing it in New York City. I'm excited. West African food. Both of us, something yeah. that we love. Yeah, yeah, on the map. Not just the food, the music. Yes, you know, we're excited that the food as well is starting to catch a lot of attention, and we're excited to show you guys the amazing, you know, cuisines that you know these guys in here have. So, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We got a bunch of their Super Bowls to try. Their Super Bowl has jollof rice, which is cooked in tomato broth. Kelawele, uh, which are spiced sweet plantains, and nambe, which is a stew with black-eyed peas, sweet potato, and okra. And we got that with both beef and chicken, uh, which has suya spice on it. Their vegan bowl has African red rice, efarillo, which is a veggie stew, this one with kale, those same plantains, and nambe, plus a bowl of black-eyed peas and a kale salad. Are you a box? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's like West Africa. Yeah. That's yeah. like West Africa. <laughs> the combination of the plantain and the black eyed peas is like a classic West African combination. Mm -hmm. okay. You get the sweetness, a little bit of that crispiness from the plantain. And then like the the black eyed peas just get so much of the earthiness to it as well. So it's like a nice little back dough. Melts everything out. I feel like I'm in class right now. <laughs> <laughs> the aromatic stuff all the dishes is incredible. Like the little sweetness, the little heat, the spices running through mm -hmm. everything. It's a lot like, of flavors. It, yeah. It's so much flavor, mm -hmm. really. Great. And what's nice too is like, everything is spiced, but it's not spicy. It's not mm -hmm. like already got spicy. And it adds like another kind of layer of intrigue to the to food. You, get, you always come for food for like the fattiness, the saltiness, the, the acid. But I think when you add spice in a really delicate depth hand, it enhances everything. It makes you actually salivate more for the food and, and want to go into the other stuff. You know, I say that about salt. You don't want things to taste salty. Not at all. You want the salt to bring out all the other flavors. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I think that's what's really key. Yeah, what, what I'm getting here, which I love, is yeah. just like, like you said, an explosion of flavors. Yeah. And like not crazy, like not these, not like things that I don't understand I've ever had before, but maybe like in this way that yes. I've had before. I think it's the combination yeah. of the flavors that we use. There's not, I mean, you taste onion, you know what ginger is, right. you know what tomato and, and everything else is. I really like, again, the combination of those uh, ingredients, almost blended in everything. You see a little bit of that, like, all throughout. So, jollof rice is made with blended ginger, blended garlic, blended tomato, tomato and onions, right? That's here, that's obviously here as well. That's in the, uh, the plantains. So it's like traces of those ingredients that you kind of see woven throughout the entire meal. Um, but no, I, I think you get it spot on, man. And I think everything, it seems like, everything is a long process. The way yeah. this food tastes, <laughs> yeah. there's no way any of these things are simple and easy just to whip up. Well said, man. If my mom were to do this, she'd probably start at like seven in the morning. Right, okay. yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. a whole day this process. Is a whole right, day and, process. but you can taste it. And you yeah. absolutely and it's taste fresh. it. fresh. It was yeah. really impressive that they're making this in a, on the spot and, it, and it's fresh. Oh, uh, this is delicious part. So this is a very West African, who are this, this juice, I would mm -hmm. say, made out of hibiscus. Um, but we call it Nigeria, we call it Zobo. So it's a very local drink that, you know, you can make at home. Yeah. Hibiscus flour with some pineapple, I believe. Pineapple, orange. Orange. As it goes, you know, cinnamon. Yeah. yeah. So that was really, really nice. What's so cool about Zobo, you call it Nigeria Zobo. Yeah. Ghana, we call it Zobo. Oh. And okay. other parts of Africa, they'll call it Bissap. Okay. In Caribbean, they'll call it uh, Soro. So it's one of those drinks that obviously has crossed through with the whole migrant, you yeah, know, yeah. through West Africa, over you to the Caribbean. 
you'll see some of them uh, look like in Mexican, like an agua, agua fresca, right? Well, we made mm -hmm. like this as well. This is really good. I love that. I love it. The Edge in Harlem calls itself Jamaican British American Fusion. And in the 10 years since they opened, they've become a neighborhood favorite. We are in Harlem, historic Harlem. I love this place. It's like home to me um, at the Edge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. It's a classic spot known for its um, eclectic menu. You got New York City classics, you got Caribbean classics. We're here for the Caribbean, obviously, as well. So, a bunch of jerk. We have some festivals, some uh, soup dumplings, soup, yeah. um, and, and everything fresh, man. I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Yes, sir. So we got the coconut fish burger, which is a fried basa fish encrusted with coconut flakes and comes with a homemade tartar sauce, curry chicken with a side of plantains, and then their soup of the day was carrot ginger soup with festival dumplings, which are made with cornmeal and are kind of like hush puppies in taste and texture. Classic Caribbean uh, pairing of a soup and, and dumplings. Festival dumplings is a cornmeal, flour, water, um, a little bit of sugar, it's hearty, man. So a couple of bites with that in the soup. Okay. Just okay. Hopefully last you for the entire night. But yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. In. That mm. would last for the entire day. That would day. last you the entire day, <laughs> for sure. Straight to the point. That's effing good. Mm -hmm. When they say fresh, like... It's very fresh. Straight out the fryer. Mm -hmm. No time wasted between the fryer and bun and on the plate. Like big pieces of coconut, too. Yeah. Delicious. Mm. Texture is amazing. And you would think that coconut, right? as like a crust for a fish would be like overpowering yeah. too much. It just suits it really yeah. well. No. Yeah. This is what I love about like ingredients from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Again, like we said, it's a rango. You get the use of these ingredients, but in different ways. Obviously we had the coconut yes. crust it's uh, fish right here. It's coconut flakes, but then we're getting coconut in a completely different way right here mm -hmm. in the curry mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> With all those beautiful aromatic spices, turmeric's in there, the curry's in there. Chicken's braised beautifully, it's really good. Go ahead and just crack into that. Okay. So typically, man, you grab your soup, maybe even dump just a little in. dip. Yeah. A okay. Dip. It's good. Wow. That's so good. Mmm. <laughs> That's oh. incredibly good. The festival dumpling, it almost tastes like it has a little bit of like nutmeg or cinnamon or clove in there, right? Mm hmm Sweet. It's dex. It's dex. I mean, it's a, it's a, like a dense donut. Mm-hmm. It's fried, really jewelry, yeah. Literally. And the soup is really nice. Yeah. Mmm. The festival can hold me mm. down for like the entire day. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, what's your like go-to meal right before you get? Pasta usually my go-to. Sometimes I mix it up a little bit of rice, mm -hmm. you know. Well, the majority of the time is pasta. It don't matter to me. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like get I, the carbs in. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. and I enjoy pasta just, you know. So, yeah. what about after the game? Oh, after the game is uh, it's just it's a free go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever, you know, whatever you can find, just go in. It's usually like late night anyway, right? Usually late late night, but a lot of times it's, it's different. You know, sometimes I'm feeling steak. Sometimes I'm, I want to have. Um, I don't know, some type of fish yeah. or whatever it is, you know, lamb chops, you know, but, you know, a big protein meal. You know, but I just try to like, you know, diversify nice. from, you know, post game. Adam African Cuisine uh, specializes in authentic Ghanaian food. We are our last stop, man. We had to come to the Bronx, stomping grounds in the X. We are on East Tremont right now at a dumb cuisine. Uh, when it comes to Ghanaian food, this is the spot for sure. Catering, uh, the restaurant, the catering turned into a restaurant and they're just serving up authentic Ghanaian meals, Ghanaian cuisine. Before we sat down to eat, this was the best part of the day. The cooks in the back were so excited Eric was there. They had to show him how they make their food and did an impromptu lesson on their secrets. Loved watching this go down. But let's get to the food. Wache is a dish of rice and beans uh, made with sorghum leaves and black eyed peas, and then just an assortment of so much. Ours had dried cassava, jerk chicken, goat meat, braised beef, and eggs. And you can eat this for literally any meal of the day. On the side, it had this spicy sauce, which so is made of shrimp, chili pepper, tomato, and ginger, and more. So, I was just mentioning earlier before we actually started rolling that when I get to Ghana um, and I land, watch it is uh, the, the thing that I order on the morning, noon, and night. I don't care what time of the day it is. 
Uh, I call it like the OG rice and peas. There's so many versions of rice and peas all throughout the diaspora, but to me, I don't even think that there's anyone like older than this. It's uh, the rice gets its color from sorghum leaves, dry sorghum leaves that bleed out this beautiful like magenta color, and they like take over that the color of the rice. There's black eyed peas with that. Typically, it's like a smorgasbord. We kind of have that. Um, there's spaghetti. You might see some sliced avocado. Eggs is something that we throw on it as well. Uh, the Orange right here is uh, dry cassava called uh, dry cassava called gari. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit of like palm oil um, in there, and then we have uh, some jerk chicken, a little bit of goat meat as well that's been braised beautifully. I was over there working on that goat um, as well. So I'm ready to dig in. And yeah, of course. What's that? Shit's off. This right here is like the classic uh, West African Ghanaian. It's almost like an exo sauce. Um, it's made with shrimp, mm. uh, chili peppers, tomato, ginger. Uh, spicy, typically, so go in with caution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's gonna like accentuate this right Just here. a little bit in every I gotta, in every I gotta say, this is my first time trying to watch that. Never. And I've heard so much about it. So that. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so good. I love this thing. It's one of my favorite dishes and really? one of my favorite things to eat. I love okay, this. okay. <laughs> just the one. I sort of understand even after one bite of just like the comfort food. Of comfort, mm -hmm. yes, yes, big facts. Yeah. I want all of those heat. Whoa, it's, uh -huh. it's, it picked up slow. Now it's really, yeah. Whoa. It's a good burn, but it's, it's a burn. hot. Yeah? It's uh -huh. hot. Here we go. You did the whole thing, man. I went for this it. This is too much. Proceed at your own. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say this is like the national dish of Ghana? I would say it's the national dish of Ghana. I say jollof rice is the, like the region's food, mm -hmm. West African region, mm -hmm. right? And then this kind of like this is specific to Ghana. This yeah, is because I mean, y'all been saying because mm -hmm. we have rice and beans, mm -hmm. but we just call it rice and beans. Rice and beans, right? And again, you'll have this all throughout like the diaspora. There's a rice and beans version yeah, in so many yeah. different countries, right? But it's never. It's not upset like this. No. Yeah, yeah. They would not oh, stop sabo. sending food sabo. out, but oh my god, I was stuffed. This is like after the club, man. <laughs> <Some fried yams. laughs> Some uh, red bread with some fish. Wait, which one is after the club? After, after the club? Breakfast. Nah, this is breakfast. This is after the club. <laughs> okay. yeah, this is after the club for sure. Okay. This is for me. I'm here like after midnight plus. I'm probably looking for something like this towards like the middle of the day. This can hold me down. We can fry yam. Well, hot. Yeah. Hot. Ah. Really hot. But a nice kind of like neutral thing to kind of go back to. Yeah. So much flavor and spices and everything to kind of go back and it balances out. Yeah, it balances out. Pass me this uh, ginger drink with a little bit of ginger, um, grains of salem, with uh, and then you have clove. Uh, what else? A little bit of um, and some secrets. And some secrets. Uh -oh. and, <laughs> and then make this in house. They make this in house. A, so, a shot or a sip? I'm saving a sip. I'm gonna oh, sip it then. I'm not gonna shot it. Right? <laughs> Oh, sure. Ooh, it's not. That's actually really nice. Yeah, it's really, the ginger's just at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, and you know the food is good when you start to sweat from with. I'm <laughs> sweating. Every part of my body is sweating. <laughs> Come close. I gotta tell you guys, I can't say this too loud, but watch it. It's really good. I gotta come check it out. This is the spice. My first time trying Ghanaian food. Watch it. I've been hearing a lot about it, but this is my first time, and I gotta say. It was Seth's kiss. It it's better good. than... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but all jokes aside, this was a really dope spot, you know. Um, if you're in the Bronx, if you're in New York, y'all gotta come check it out, man. Big facts, big facts. This is truly why I do what I do. Not only did I get to eat incredible food, spend the day of two absolute superstars, but learn through food about cultures that I personally wasn't as aware of as I should have been. Food truly connects us, and I can't wait to dig deeper into even more. So let me know in the comments where I should eat next, and make sure you're a sub because I go on food adventures all over the world, and you don't want to miss one bite.